Welcome to Stand, where we help make courage contagious. I'm Kelly Chewbacca, the chair of the Trump campaign in Alaska and former candidate for U.S. Senate. And I'm joined today by my amazing co-host and daughter, Denali Chewbacca. Welcome to the show, Denali. Why, thank you, Kelly. We're so happy that you're here. We've got an amazing lineup for you today, but we're going to start off by saying if you'd like to be one of our standouts, please join us at standshow.org. You can find all of our previous episodes, including one of our top shows with Bill O'Reilly, see what our stand show is all about. You can also follow us on social media, but let's not wait on that. Let's get on with the show. We've got amazing elections just around the corner, and we want to highlight two of our favorite candidates in Alaska. We're going to start off with Jared Gerker, who is looking to change the balance of power in the Senate in Juneau. Jared, let's open up with your election and welcome to the show. Hey, Kelly. Hey, Denali. Thanks, guys, so much for having me. Uh, yeah, we've got we've got a really exciting race going on here in Chugiak, Eagle River. We're trying to take the state Senate back, right? We've got an incumbent who ran as a Republican, ran as a conservative, and yet has governed completely in the opposite direction. You know, when you when you say, hey, I'm a, I'm a conservative, but then you vote with Forrest Dunbar 90% of the time, that's a problem for a lot of people. And when you put the Democrats in control of the state Senate, that's another problem for a lot of people. So we're, we're trying to take the take the seat back and, and flip the balance of power in the state Senate so we can get some, you know, some actual good conservative common sense things done. Yeah, that's absolutely right. What has been one of the biggest challenges you have faced in this campaign where Chugiak and Eagle River is one of our most conservative, most Republican strongholds in the state? What's been one of the big challenges for you? Yeah, you look, one of the, the biggest things, right, is is the, the Merricks are very powerful people. They, they, they bring a tremendous amount of name ID. They bring a tremendous amount of money and influence to the table uh, that that's hard to compete with. Right. And so when you've got just a normal, a normal stand up, you know, citizen like myself trying to make a difference, um, it's a lot to overcome. It's a lot to battle for sure. Um, but we've we've put in the work. Right. And so we, we launched this campaign in January. We almost immediately started door knocking. Um, and uh, I don't know if anyone's been outside in Alaska in February. It's very cold. <laughs> we started door knocking right away. And, uh, you know, we, we, we crossed over 16,000 doors uh, yesterday wow. that we've done uh, for this campaign because we knew that if we're going to get outspent, right, we're probably going to get outraised. We are being outraised, but we're not going to be outworked. And that was, our, that was our biggest thing is we need to get out there and connect with people, talk with people, hear from them, hear the stories that are most impactful um, you know, and, and, and hear all that stuff. And so that's what we've been doing. And that's been one of the, the, you know, the biggest challenges, but also the biggest blessing we've had, uh, is that we've run as an underdog the entire time because we are, and that's, I think that's really propelled us to be in a really good spot to actually flip the seat. Yeah. So Jared, tell us, I know that Denali and I've talked many times that money isn't the only way to win a race. And I've heard through the state that you don't need any more money. Uh, I'd like to know the real truth about that. I can always use more money. Look, uh, we're in the final two and a half weeks here. Um, and yes, we, we need as much money as we can, honestly, truly, because Kelly's outraised us a lot. She's got a tremendous amount of money coming in from uh, from special interest groups, the 907 initiative, putting Alaska's first, um, all of the big labor groups, because her husband happens to be uh, one of the big union bosses here in the state. Uh, so they're out spending me, out raising me probably four to one at this point. Wow. Um, so any, any money we can get is going to be incredibly helpful to pushing, you know, those last messages out, responding to the, you know, the October surprises and whatever else they might, you know, throw our way. Um, so anything that we can raise at this point is going to be incredibly helpful and in, in helping us finish this strong and, and get over the finish line and take the seat back. That's great. And where can people donate to you at? Yeah, so they can uh, they can go to jaredforalaska.com. Uh, we've got a really uh, the link is very prominently displayed on the website on where to go to donate. And um, yeah, anything anything helps at this point. Awesome. So, Jared, why don't you tell us a little bit about how your campaign contrasts with Kelly? So she declares to be a Republican, a conservative. You said she votes with Forrest Dunbar 90 percent of the time. Can you tell us a couple of ways that you two differ as candidates? Yeah, like that's a really good question. Um, here's the thing. Prior to getting into this race, I was what Kelly and her allies would call a nobody. In fact, they have called me that. Um, I was just a private citizen living my life going to work, providing for my family, raising my uh, newborn, um, and frankly, very happy with life, right? Um, however, our story took a bit of a drastic turn. My, you know, my brother was, was, was murdered at the end of last year, um, and it made us realize 
we had to do something different. And because the policies that that Kelly and the people that she's put in power, um, the policies that they pursue are are creating this is creating this cycle of violence here in the state. And so that's one of the, the biggest things is, look, when you say you're a conservative, but then you're going to turn around, you're going to vote with Forrest Dunbar 90 percent. That, that's a problem. Um, when you and so what one of the thing big things I'm running on is criminal justice reform, like actually fixing the problem, right? Because we are releasing dozens of violent. Just last year in Anchorage alone, they released up to 35 people indicted for murder or homicide here in Anchorage with bail as low as zero dollars. That is categorically insane. And the person in charge of the Judiciary Committee in the Senate. Matt Clayman, one of the original cheerleaders for the soft on crime catch on catch and release SB 91 bill uh, from about a decade ago. So you can't say you're this while you go and you do that. Right. If you you are what you do and what she's been doing is is very destructive for the state. It's completely out of line with the values of this community. And so that's what we've been highlighting and saying, hey, look, if you want somebody um, that's going to actually do the things they say they're going to do, who actually believes the things that they say, uh, then I'm your guy. And, and that's the contrast we've been making. And obviously, it's been resonating with people, right? Because we had the primary. We dang near tied in the primary. She had me by a little bit. But that was with two other awesome conservative candidates in the race that got about 20 percent of the vote combined. Now, what happened after the primary? Uh, those two candidates withdrew and endorsed me. So it's it's looking really good. But we just have to get it over the finish line. Mm, right. You know, I just want to point out something really interesting you said earlier, Jared, is that first um, at the beginning of the interview, you mentioned that the Merricks are powerful, not just Kelly. And I think that's really important to highlight is the fact that Joey Merrick is actually a massive player with labor unions. And even though the campaign has been accusing you of being a nobody, you're a regular Alaskan. You represent the Alaskan people, what they believe in, their values, what they fight for, what they want. But the Merricks are a labor union family that have bought their way into the Senate and have done catastrophic things for the Valley since then. So I just wanted to point that out for our viewers, because if you didn't know, now you know. <laughs> yeah. And to that point real quick, you know, we had a debate last week. And in our closing statements, I was talking about, hey, here's the challenges people are having. It's it's scary right now. Cost of everything is high. Our education system is struggling. Crime is soaring. And and, and it feels like we're in a bit of a decline as a state. It feels like we're sliding. And the, and, and, that res, and that is the exact same thing that thousands of people mm -hmm. all across this district have told me. And Kelly's closing statement was, actually, things are going pretty good here. I don't, I don't know what the problem is. Alaska's got, Alaska's doing really well. And it's like, could you be any more out of touch mm -hmm. with just the regular, with regular Alaskans? Because I'm sure to you at the top, you know, your house is literally on top of the mountain. Uh, you are living such an incredibly privileged life. How you just possibly, you just couldn't possibly understand what the average Alaskan is going through. And you've not put in any work to understand. You're not out there talking to people like I am. Well, speaking of privilege, many people don't remember that Kelly Merrick was one of those um, scandalous few who were with Zach Fields and other Democrats at the pizza bong togo party. Pong togo, gate. Yeah, pong gate that absolutely destroyed rooms in the Capitol during the COVID lockdown when everybody was supposed to sequester and stay apart and separate and wear masks and not fraternize. Uh, they decided that the rules didn't apply to them. And this is when people were getting mass cases of COVID and staff were having to shut down and they were having to shut down committee meetings and the, the work in Juneau. These Democrats all got together and threw a, a beer pizza party bash and trashed our Capitol building. And it was caught on camera. And then the Democrats with, you know, American leadership decided never to release those public those tapes to the public in transparency. And that's what it means to live that elite privileged life where you're not held accountable and you don't live in transparency to your constituents, but you are held to a different standard where all of the other senators and representatives and staff all had to be separated and all had to wear masks. But somehow uh, Merrick and the Democrats like Zach Fields and liberal bloggers who were all in the room got to party and trash the place as if they were all in some kind of a, um, a, a frat party from some some nasty movie and the rules just don't apply to her. So I think that that's interesting. I also want to pick up on what you said. You are what your record says you are. And when you say that Matt, Matt Clayman is in charge of the Judiciary Committee, 
that would not have happened had Kelly Merrick not switch sides and given a majority control to the Democrats in the Senate. And we all have to remember that there are technically more Republicans in the Senate in Juneau than there are Democrats, but because she threw her weight over to the Democrats to create this Democrat led and dominated caucus, that's why we have these soft on crime policies that we have. Jared, we'll give you the last minute to share your thought on that before we go to a break. Yeah, look, that's that's exactly right. You know, and, and and Kelly likes to say, well, if you want to get something done, you have to be in the majority. And she even said that in the debate last week. And I, I remind her, I said, Senator, you were in a majority. That's correct. There were more Republicans. The, the, the people of Alaska elected a Republican majority, and you completely hijacked their will and put the Democrats in control of the Senate. That, that's, that is your record, right? And so that that is a huge problem, not just for for me as a constituent, but as for the rest of the community, but but statewide, like the the people expect conservative right of center governance. And Kelly Merrick decided to completely uh, throw that away and and do her own thing and chart her own course all all for power. Right. So she could get a, you know, really a really nice committee assignment. And uh, and make sure that money's flowing to her crony friends. It's a problem. It's a real problem. Right. It, to her friends, but not to her district. I mm-hmm. think that that's the point because her votes don't align with her constituents and either you're representing your people or you're not. And that's what elections are about. They're performance reviews for our elected officials. I want to come back and I want to compare after this break. I want to compare uh, the various union experiences that you and Kelly Merrick share And I want to talk about your union experience, one that you and I share and share with the voters what you've done, because I think it's pretty amazing what you've done for workers in Alaska. You're on stand with Kelly Denali Chewbacca and Jared Gerker. We'll be back right after this. JaredForAlaska.com. Gene's Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram trucks, providing the cars, trucks, and SUVs that keep us working, keep us playing, keep us moving forward. And for over 75 years, Jeans has been helping keep us connected. Jeans Chrysler Jeep Dodge and Ram, the official dealership of life in Alaska. Together, we are strong. In Fairbanks and online at jeanschrysler.com. 